Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another Mr. Farney Earth Science video. In this video, we've reached the final large chunk of our meteorology unit, specifically our weather section. We're going to start talking about the nature of storms. We're going to get into a little discussion about thunderstorms, how they work. We'll go into severe weather. We'll look at tornadoes a little bit. We'll kind of revisit hail as part of that tornado discussion. And then we will finish out our weather unit meteorology unit by talking about tropical systems, hurricanes, all that stuff. In this video specifically, we're just going to kind of go through thunderstorms. We're going to see what it's all about, different ways thunderstorms form, the conditions that are needed to have thunderstorm formation. And then the main focus is that the intensity and duration of thunderstorms, it all depends upon very specific local conditions for these thunderstorms to form. So let's get right into it. Let's dive through. First off, how do we get thunderstorms? The first thing we need is moisture. We have these maritime air masses that are large, large areas of water. We know maritime just means, you know, it means ocean. And there are different maritime, polar maritime, tropical air masses that we deal with. So you need moisture in the air. When that water vapor condenses into droplets, we're releasing heat. So condensation is that kind of heat reaction. So when we're forming clouds up there in the atmosphere, the air is cooling the water vapor into droplets, it condenses, heat is released, but warm air continues to rise higher and higher, producing very tall clouds. So moisture is very key. Now this lifting that happens can, you know, be caused by that kind of movement of the moisture, but ideally the warm air is generally pushed up by an incoming air mass like a cold front. If you remember our pictures of our cold front, cold front acts like a wedge, pushes the warm air up in the atmosphere. So the faster that cold air comes into an area, it can push that warm air up in the atmosphere very, very quickly, creating kind of unstable conditions, which is our number three, where instability uh, produces rising air. What is instability? Well, it's, you know, Clouds continue to rise up in the atmosphere until they reach a specific elevation where the pressure, density, temperature, all of them are equal. So our clouds will continue to grow upward until the air kind of stabilizes out. So if you have a lot of instability in your atmosphere, you might hear the meteorologist say, oh, there's a high amount of instability. It means that there is a really large column of air that that cloud can use to grow until it hits that stable point at the very top, the very peak. Here's kind of what that instability looks like. If we have, you know, temperature um, in the cloud is different from the temperature kind of in the atmosphere of that area, like in the bottom picture here, it's the air is 15 degrees Celsius, the clouds 10, that cloud will continue to rise or continue to grow until it kind of equals out in temperature. So that's how we can get those really, really tall anvil cumulonimbus clouds. If we have a large column of air that is very different from the cloud temperature, they can get very, very, very big. So for instance, if this number wasn't 15, say it was 30 and the cloud was 10, it might have to go much higher up before it kind of reach, reaches that peak of air stability. We have different types of thunderstorms and they generally show up depending what's going on atmospherically in kind of the specific areas. So the first one is called air mass thunderstorms. These come from an unequal heating of Earth's surface. Uh, these are the ones that we see generally four o'clock in the afternoon in July. Uh, because you know it was cold in the morning, it took a long time for that surface to heat up. We had a radiation coming from the surface because of the sun's heat throughout the entire day. By the time we get to mid-afternoon, there's enough instability in the air, enough kind of evaporation that have happened, the convection's gone on long enough that we start getting these pop-up thunderstorms happening. So air mass thunderstorms are our pop-up thunderstorms because of this unequal heating. The next one's kind of cool. It's mountain thunderstorms. This is kind of like our orographic lift that we had going on before where moisture tries to go up over a mountain. And because of that elevation that's happening on one side uh, of the mountain, as that moisture kind of rises, you know, it cools, it begins to rain because of that elevation. So our mountain thunderstorms, that's like an orographic lift where the air mass goes over the mountain. Thunderstorms happen on one side, gives us the rain shadow on the other. And this is kind of an image of what that might look like. 
That cloud wants to go up over the mountain, but as it rises in elevation, it gets colder and colder. That dew point in temperature, you know, they'll start matching up. We'll start getting that precipitation on one side of the mountain. The next one, sea breeze. If you are by the coast, if we kind of alternate between having a land breeze and a sea breeze, depending the time of day. If it's daytime, we have a sea breeze where the air is moving from the ocean onto the land. And at nighttime, it shifts backwards from the land into the ocean. Why is that? Well, you know, we're heating the land during the day. So if we're heating the land, we're creating an area of low pressure. It's warm, the air is going to rise. At nighttime, that cold air in the sky now is going to sink because the land is not being heated anymore. So we kind of alternate depending the time of day between the ground being heated and air rising, ground no longer being heated, it cools, it sinks. So we kind of are reversing the convection along coastlines, depending if it's daytime or nighttime. And it's this kind of shift between daytime, nighttime, where we can see sea breeze thunderstorms happening uh, at certain types of day. So sea breeze thunderstorms, really cool. It's because we're kind of switching the convection depending on the time of day. And this is just a chart on this slide kind of showing that. The last one is frontal thunderstorms. Again, cold front moves in, pushes the warm air up and out. This can create very rapid thunderstorm growth depending how fast that cold front is moving in. It doesn't matter if it's daytime or not for frontal thunderstorms. Air mass thunderstorms do because it kind of relies on the uneven heating of the Earth's surface. Frontal thunderstorms do not care. They can happen in daytime and they can uh, last well into the nighttime as long as that cold front is moving that warm air. And that's kind of how we can also get these really massive cumulonimbus clouds like that are in the picture below it here. That warm air being really forced up in the atmosphere very quickly. Now, each of these thunderstorms, they have a specific life cycle that they're going to work through. You know, we have the cumulus stage where the air is gonna rise vertically creating updrafts. And we know if my air is moving upward very quickly with updrafts, we can get hail being created from that. So cumulus stage, air rises vertically, uh, cloud droplets can begin to coalesce. If we have that really big cumulus nimbus cloud, we have a lot of space for coalescence to form, really big raindrops, a lot of precipitation can happen from that. Uh, so again, here is the cumulus stage. Those clouds can go up to like 20,000 feet high, very, very, very tall clouds. Next is the mature stage where you have updrafts and downdrafts that are side by side in a cumulonimbus cloud, which means you have wind going up very quickly, wind going down very quickly within the same cumulonimbus cloud. You can have precipitation falling, which could be a combination of water and ice if you have hail in there that cools the air around that, which creates that sinking, creating the downdrafts. So in thunderstorms, you have that warm air that was from like the Earth's radiating heat or from the warm moisture being forced up into the sky because of the cold front and kind of one portion of it. And then as it rains behind it, it's gonna cool that air, create sinking. So we have this kind of like internal convection within the clouds, part of it going up, part of it going down uh, within thunderstorms kind of looks like this. We call this the mature stage. At this point, the clouds can go from the surface all the way up to kind of, you know, 40,000 feet. That's up and getting, encroaching the top of the troposphere. So cumulonimbus clouds, very, very, very strong. Reason is, since we have that kind of convection going on, it can last a while because we're cooling at the front of the storm, but we're feeding in moisture behind it. So even though it might be raining really, really hard in the front, this cloud is gonna be kind of powered by all the moisture and the back end of it moving up into the cloud through updrafts, kind of feeding more moisture into the storm. It's kind of like adding wood to a fire. It's never gonna run out of you know, fuel if we keep feeding it. It's happening here in this thunderstorm. The more moisture we provide it in the back end, the more it's able to kind of keep precipitating on the front end of it. Dissipation, thunderstorm begins to kind of kind of trickle out. Those downdrafts have now cooled the area enough that the updrafts begin to slow. And since there's no more energy being kind of added into it, like the fuel of our fire behind it, no more energy to draw from, thunderstorm, the cool temperature sinking kind of wins out this fight. This stage lasts until all the precipitation that has formed in the cloud 
stops. So my dissipa dissipation stage could last a long time, even if we still have a little bit of like, kind of like drizzle precipitation going on, that's still technically part of the thunderstorm. This stage isn't over until all the rain is totally gone. And here's a picture of it. So again, our three stages here that we really care about is we have, let me rewind here. Ah, so many flips. We have a cumulus stage, clouds coming in, it's forming. Mature stage, updrafts and downdrafts happening at the same time. This is where we keep fueling the thunderstorm uh, from the moisture behind it because that updraft dissipate, same stage, my downdraft beats out the updraft, uh, and this stage continues until all the rain has kind of passed. What comes with thunderstorms? We have lightning, and there's different types of lightning. Heat lightning is specific. It's cloud to cloud. It never really strikes toward the ground. You see this a lot during summertime, like in the evening hours. Heat lightning always up in the sky. Sputter lightning is cool, but it's dangerous because sputter lightning can go really, really far distances, 150 kilometers it can go up to. That's very far. One kilometer is just a little shy of a mile, about 600 meters short of a mile. So this is not quite 150 miles, 150 uh, kilometers. Uh, so without doing some quick math, that's probably like 14 miles spider lightning can crawl across the sky. So it can go really far from kind of like where the thunderstorm is. Ball lightning is a cool phenomenon, very, very infrequent, but you can actually have a ball of electricity that kind of hovers over the ground and just kind of rolls until it kind of dissipates. Uh, so those are our main types of lightning. We have spider, we have heat lightning, we have ball lightning. Those are kind of some very interesting lightning that goes along with this. So that's a lot to throw in this video. We're gonna pause it right there to kind of end it out. And the next one, we'll talk severe weather. Well, now that we know kind of how thunderstorms form, types of thunderstorms, we can go a little bit more into, you know, the dangerous things that can be associated with like hail, tornadoes, things of that nature. So if you like this video, awesome. Thank you. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, have a good rest of your day and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.